What up everyone, Big Kev back in the building. Today we check out a video, how to insult like the British. Don't forget to like and subscribe. Let's check it out. Once I saw the title of this one, I knew that I had to check it out. So without further ado, let's uh, get into it. I really do love a good insult, arguably even more than complaining about the weather or making fun of the French. Now, most of these insults are not exactly... The British definitely like to make fun of the French. ...exactly safe for work, but by some miracle, I did manage to remember ten that weren't overtly sexual, sexist, racist, classist, homophobic, or, you know, sweary. So, for example... <laughs> The list goes on forever. So, here we go. Hi, I'm Siobhan Thompson. This is Anglophenia, and try not to take this personally. Minger. This means that somebody's ugly or doing something that's disgusting. Gross is definitely the closest American equivalent. I don't think I've ever actually heard that one before. Minger. All right, that's a good one. So, for example, maybe if you were a Liverpool supporter, one might say Wayne Rooney is a potato-headed minger who couldn't kick a ball if the World Cup depended on it. You can also say... One might say that. <laughs> say ...that an action is minging, like, oh, don't eat those potatoes at the rubbish bean, Wayne. That is minging. Pillock. Yeah, I've never... I've never heard that. Oh, it looks like this. Why are the titles backwards? Pillock. I don't think I've ever heard that one either. All right. Off to a strong start. I thought, I thought I would have known most of these, or at least heard them in passing if I didn't know what the actual insult meant. This means idiot, specifically a very clumsy, forgetful kind of idiocy. You know, oh, you forgot your homework again. Brian, you are such a pillock. I know, miss, I'm sorry. <laughs> Mardi. This is a word that's most... Three for three that I don't know. Pillock seems a little uh, long-winded when you can just say idiot, but, uh, you know, uh, that doesn't really roll off the tongue. Marty's a little more precise and to the point. ...to use in the north of England to describe that very teenage type of sulky, aggressive moodiness. Ugh. Yeah. Rachel locks herself right in a room as soon as she gets home from school. Gosh, is a Marty one. Tosser. Oh, like this one. is the British equivalent to jerk. I've heard Tosser before. I don't think you... I don't think there's anyone that really hasn't heard that one. ...and means the same thing. You know, that thing. You know. I know you know. Gannet. This means somebody who's being greedy, named after the seabird of the same name. 1K Keechy, Gannets, I'm watching you. Wayne, stop eating those potatoes. Skyver. This refers to somebody who has skipped off from something that they were supposed to do. Mostly, it refers to kids who skipped school. But Man, I... I... I'm shocked by all these that I've never actually heard before. Yeah, I've never heard Skyver either. You can skive off pretty much any responsibility if you just put your mind to it. I like that one, though. I cannot believe that you got out being Sarah's bridesmaid, you dirty Skyver. Burke. This comes from the Cockney rhyming slang, Berkshire Hunt, meaning a word that I am not allowed to say here. It means an unpleasant, boorish kind of person. Oh. I cannot believe that my boss gave me a verbal warning for being five minutes late and he was ogling me the entire time. What a burk. Barmy. I've heard barmy before. This is a very gentle, affectionate way of calling someone crazy. Don't worry about all the crystals at my auntie's house. She's just a bit barmy. English cricket fans call themselves the barmy army because you do have to be a bit bonkers to want to watch a game that takes four days to play. Yeah, seriously, I, uh, I definitely have to check out cricket just to learn the rules better of it because I never... Uh... I had a friend who loved cricket, and he was terrible at explaining it. And when he said that it took a few days to watch a game, I, he lost me at that point. Thick as two short planks. This is another term for idiot. What can I say? We value intelligence in my country. I keep catching Wayne eating potatoes out of the bin. He is as thick as two short planks, that boy. He really loves these uh, potato references. There are several other similes that are used in the same way. For example, thick as a brick, or as they say on Blackadder, thick as a whale omelet. People I've heard thick as a thick as a brick, but I can't say I've ever seen thick as a whale omelet. <laughs> Although I never saw Blackadder, I know it's uh, what Rowan Atkinson, who was uh, also famous for Mr. Bean, but I never uh, I never caught that one. 
People also say just thick as, as in, oh my goodness, he is thick as. This can also be used for almost every other insult. You know, crazy as, weird as, ugly as, and so on. And finally, yes, the two-fingered salute. I often see Americans do this as the peace sign, but it is the British version of flipping the bird, albeit a lot softer. Oi. The story goes. Oh, I never knew that. I, yeah, I've never, I've never heard that, or I, I don't think I've ever even seen anyone do it in that context before either. That's interesting. That it comes from when medieval English longbowmen were trouncing the French at battles such as Agincourt. The French would cut off the first two fingers of any captured archers so that they could no longer pull a bow. So the archers would make this sign on the battlefield as a way of telling the enemy, hey, I still have my two fingers and I'm gonna shoot you. This that makes sense. I, uh, I like that reasoning behind it. Story is probably apocryphal, but like I said earlier, we really do love making fun of the French. What are your favorite British insults? Let us know in the comments without being a Mardi tosser about it. And don't forget to like and subscribe. And you can read more about this on the Anglophenia blog. Yeah, that was uh, an interesting one. I was surprised by the amount of uh, insults that I never even had heard of. I think I only knew two of them. Maybe I'd heard a third one before. Third one sounded vaguely familiar, but yeah, I, I, I'd never even... I can't even remember hearing them in passing and not knowing at the time they were insults and just... I don't remember them whatsoever, so yeah, that was interesting. I'll definitely have to check out some more videos from Anglophenia, see if they have any other interesting uh, little tidbits to share like this because that was all that was all news to me comment on uh, some of your favorite uh, british insults below down in the comments and uh, until next time have a good one